the eternal hope for the nations, even in a season like this, it's in you. So when you open, when you live, when you live the real that is inside of you, you live hope. You show hope. That people can see hope. They can understand hope. Hello? So may God give you that revelation of how to live the hope that is inside of you. That people can see Jesus Christ in and through you. Amen. Let it be so. 12 points that you can quickly write down. And so take the phone or take the pen. Or can I organize pen paper for someone? Hallelujah. Let's write that down. 12 points. Pray for the nations. The first one is pray. But what I want to say in a different context, I want to say there's a prayer inside of you. There's a prayer inside of you that needs to be prayed. But it's already there. It's already in you. So there's a solution, there's a hope that needs to be spoken over a place, over a situation, over your marriage, over your family, over someone, over the, the work, where you work. But it's in you where you're supposed to speak it. You need to speak out in prayer. That was supposed to happen. Are you with me? We have a situation, yes, in Ukraine and Russia. And guys, we're supposed to pray for them. Amen? At least. At least. But you know, amazing, God in his wisdom, suddenly the churches in the world praying for Ukraine and Russia. And yes, there's a few thousand that died. And yes, some horrific stories. But you know, through all the prayers from all the churches in the world, there's this saturating in the spirit of this cloud of prayers hanging over Ukraine and Russia. And you know, even though maybe a few thousand that died, and may they, if their life wasn't right with Christ before the time, I hope in Jesus' name they had the chance to make right. But for that cloud of prayer, may there be a revival for millions, millions, millions. That millions in Ukraine, millions in Russia will come to repentance. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, and he thought he can destroy Ukraine and Russia. And suddenly there's a revival. Because through the situation, the focus of so many churches in the nations were, were put there to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray. And don't just pray. Yes, but don't just pray for circumstances to change. But for God to do a work in Ukraine, God to do a work in Russia. Amen? And then whatever the enemy thought he could destroy, <laughs> it, how they say, boomerang, back to him. And there will be revival. There will be revival. In Jesus' name. All these, all these sons and 18-year-old, uh, few of us maybe are still 18 years old. In the tanks, you think yourself as 18 years old, or your son, 18 years, here they go into this place, they don't know why they are there. Now, you can, can say, yes, 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 12,000 troops, gone, dead, blown, <laughs> gone. How many of those 12,000 or 16,000 young guys, wanted to be there in that war and uh, yes yes praise god yay <laughs> they were blown away and didn't never they didn't even want to be there most of them i say no one thing i want you to to pray that those guys will just give up like like thousands actually did at this stage some of those young men, they just get out of the tanks, out of the place and say, we give up. We're not going we, we, we to blow up a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of old mummies and aunties. We're not going to blow them up. We're not, we're not going to go with this war. As yes, some of them would push on because they know if they go back, they will shoot them, as it happened already. 
But we say, no, God, give him a way out. Give him a way out. Give him a way out. Let, let like some of that were caught already, that went out and that said, sorry, 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 we feel so ashamed. But they will get out there and say, no, we cannot. We have a conscience. We have character. We have integrity. We're not going to fight further in this way. Let's pray that. that those Russian guys, they don't need to be blown up into 20 pieces. Hello? Come on, man. So let's pray that. But most of all, see in the prayer that is inside of you. God lay a specific, unique prayer in you. Like you have a, a fingerprint. Amazing. And now out of billions of people, nobody has the same fingerprint. My brother, my sister, there's a specific prayer in your heart that God has given you in your unique calling that you need to open your mouth and pray what is inside. Because there's a hope in you. And from, because of the living hope living in you, from that place, there's a prayer that needs to come from your lips. Amen. Second point. Provide. You better provide for the needs for, of millions of vulnerable people. Millions of people that desperately need to see that God is real. Desperately need to see that God is a God of love. And because of God's honor, because we respect him, and because he wants us, we need to provide. So in that sense, even with this, there's the uh, account number. You can mark it Ukraine, or you can mark it Ethiopia, or anything else, other. A week ago, ago I had a uh, day with about Ethiopia, and when I... Looked at the news, it was exactly the time where there's uh, a lot of fighting and destruction. And at such a uh, point where two sides had to make a uh, ceasefire so that humanitarian um, help and aid can come in because they say there's more than five million that could die of starvation. That's a slow death. That's not boom and you're gone starvation that's horrific and i just had that day with so i just know that if maybe you must give a uh, hundred rand to ethiopia then that's your five loaves of bread and two fish but i'm asking you um you hear from god what you must get, give i want to challenge you not to hear if you must give but to hear what you need to give and if, it, if it's a hundred rand for ethiopia and a hundred for ukraine then let it be so. But I'm saying, my brother, God gives the command to the disciples, feed these guys, the 5,000. No, let them go and, fit and get their food there and then there. God said, no, now you give them food. God knows how much you have and how not. He knew there were only five loaves of bread and two fish. He knew it. But still, and then what you have can be your excuse. But Lord, we only, we only, only, only have five loaves of bread and two fish. That's why we cannot do what you ask. God said, because God said, what do you have in your hand? My question, what do you have in your hand? No, I barely get through myself. Uh, then maybe it's. It's a time where you're supposed to be pushing yourself to sow. I had to sow the most in my life in a time when it was really, really difficult. And God did a major work. It's not so, so that you can reap. It's not a trick. Are you with me? It's not about a trick. But if you can understand, what can I contribute? Five loaves of bread, two fish, God will bring the multiplication. God will bring the multiplication, but you bring what you have in your hand. You ask God, what must you bring? Are you with me? And we will hear from Holy Spirit, where must it exactly go for the refugee challenge there, but also for in Africa, for the guys in Ethiopia. If God said it, he will show us where exactly to put it. Amen. Let it be so. Let's do that. Can we do? 
provide. It was not a suggestion for the disciples to provide for the 5,000. He, he commanded them to do that what was not possible. He commanded them to provide what was not possible for them to provide. Are you with me? But if you are willing to obey God in providing with that what you don't have, you will see the miracles. You will see the miracles. There's enough testimonies about that in a lot of your lives, in my life, where God will challenge you, especially in that, at that time, in the, you know, that season of your life, when, when you're going through a lot of challenges about finances and food. And to make sure that you're not focused on the challenge, focus on the food, God will bring you to sow. <laughs> so that your heart is not focused on the challenge, but that your heart is focused on Him. God is jealous for your heart. Amen. Are you with me? Pray and provide. Let's say, there's a prayer and there's provision in my life. God has given you a prayer. It's not for yourself. God has given you provision that's not for yourself. There's a lot of prayer, a lot of provision that is not for yourself. Don't steal what belongs to somebody else. If God, if I have a, oh, a million, that's not a lot, but let me say I have a million. But God wants me to sow it into, oh, not, not you. Oh, not John Dean. Um, okay. Why not? Miskin. In his life. If that was what God has destined for that, then the provision from the beginning here wasn't mine. Well, I keep it. It's not me sowing into his life. It's me and I have in my possession his money. Do I not sow? I'm a thief. Do you understand? There's things that you're supposed to sow, that you're supposed to give, that is not yours. There's prayers that is supposed not to be for yourself. And if you keep that for yourself, you don't be a thief through selfish prayer. Because there's certain prayers that God has given you in your heart that you are supposed to. Supposed to open your mouth and pray for Italy or for Russia or for some place or for some town or for a university or for some school. Where it's prayers that is for that place. So that when that thing is in here, just look here, when it's in here and you bring it out, it's becoming part of that cloud, that cloud in the spirit that will rain down over that place. But that thing cannot stay in here. It's not yours. That prayer is not yours. So you make the time to take out what does not belong to you and to give it to that school. And that is that half an hour of prayer. Are you with me? Let's say, I will not live as a thief. Okay. Because you can do that with your prayer. You can do that with your provision that God is giving you. No. So that million, it's not mine, it's his. Are you with me? God will show you. Number three and number four. Believe and declare. Believe that God will show himself. And God will show his eternal plan. And manifest himself even to a people that didn't call upon his name. May God's mercy, God's mercy be on us and on the nations. In a season like this where everything is shaken once again. Oh man, here's all these, these big shots with the sanctions. They have the billions. The bill, the billions. Next moment, everything frozen, phew, it's gone. One hour, and your billions is gone. Are you with me? What security did all those big, big shots have <laughs> with all the billions? With the banks and everything, all the assets were just frozen. Is it a me? Are you with me? I'm saying, my brother, I hope your focus is right. But what do you believe God will do? What do you believe God will do in your life and for the nations? There's a faith in you. First of all, Ephesians 2, 8. Faith is a gift from God. Why is it a gift from God? I thought you must get it from the Word. Why? Because the Word of God is a gift. 
And from the gift, the word, you take out the faith. You get the faith. And out of that place, it's a gift. Faith is a gift. You have faith. You have faith. It's inside of you. Amen. Because your eternal hope lives in, inside of you. His name is Jesus Christ. And through his word, he's giving you faith. But you better work with that faith. That faith is not for you to have all the nice stuff. If God blesses you with that, great. But your faith is not to have the nice stuff. The faith is so that you have the capacity to do God's will. Your faith is so that you will have breakthroughs. Your faith is so that you will have an excellent life with God. Your faith is so that you will not be a washout. Your faith is so that not whenever, whatever Rabbi speaks to you, you will just submit and do whatever he says. Why can the demons run over you? That Rabbi must stop. Because you can be victorious in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's say I have a prayer. I have provision. It's all not for me. And there's a faith in your heart. There's a declaration in your heart. Declaration that the church will be relevant. That the church will be at the right time, at the right place, for the right reason. You won't believe it. The devil is very smart also. He can organize that you will be at the right place, right time, right moment, when another guy will be there with the same rubbish problem. And for some reason, you will just be there. You will just find the other one on the phone that has the same sexual problem. You will just find the one that also wants to go and smoke some rubbish. It is just there. Right time, right moment. It is just... Why? Because the devil can organize. Because the devil can organize, man. Hello? But you must decide. Uh -uh. At the right time, the right moment, for the right reason, I will be in a place. God, why am I here? Why am I here in Pick and Pay? Why is these students around me right now? Why am I close to that leader? Ooh, I can be in trouble. No, maybe because you must ask him something. You have a break time, but you as a student, yeah, there you see, there is that leader. You just, just at that moment, your focus is there, and there was that leader. Go to that guy and ask him something or share with him something or tell him he must please pray for you for this and this and this. When last did you do something like that? Just go to, go to someone and say, can you please quickly pray for me for this and this and this? Are you with me? My spiritual father, four months before his death with uh, Dr. Jonathan, that gave me that prophecy that uh, get your sons together, lay hands on them. This is your last round. You will not build a house any further. They will build a house. Remember? Dr. Jonathan David prophesied that over my spiritual father, and then we organized this, uh, the, the leaders' conference, and he laid hell, hands on 12 of us, and one, one week later he died. And the prophecy was fulfilled. Boom. But you know, in that, in that two weeks, Dr. Jonathan said to me once, he was laughing, he said, no, that do him. He would come. But he, he, was, a, he was a very intense guy. Who's here that knew him? Not really. Can you let go? Net VPN, my vrouwki. So we get asked, "Dan, we are not here, yeah." So he would come, and uh, Patrick would so. So in break times, now I mean those days. Oh, whoa, 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 school of the prophets. <laughs> you have more than ten to twelve hours of teaching every day. It is going. And he says, then in break time, he will come and sit with him and take his hand and say. Pray for me, for this and this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> he says, he will donkey. He will just take his arm, pull it up here and say, pray for me for this, this, this. He says, the next break time is there again. What about this and this and this and this? Why this and, and how can this work? And he says that Duom, apostolic leader with a lot of churches and in Africa and a pioneer in so many ways. Willing to take the, the blame for a lot of rubbish, you know. In those days, today we can sing in tongues. It's easy. 
They had to take the shots. They had to walk out in faith, those apostolic leaders in those days, because you are slaughtered if you say, what? Tongues. The thing about tongues, speaking in tongues. And they had to walk by faith into a lot of things. A lot of truth that is established in our midst, in the churches. But this guy, he's there and he eats from that mouth, from that, that Dr. Jonathan. He's there with a question. He's there to learn. He's there to take. He's there to, for impartation. He's there and he wants. He, he's not just there doing a course. He's not just coming to church. Are you with me? But that was in his heart. That was in his heart. And that was the, I want to say, the integrity inside of him. May God give you that hunger, but that integrity also. What and how can you learn? Now, so what do you believe and what do you declare? Declaration. What is a declaration, my brother, my sister? It's something that you believe, but you really seriously believe that with the authority, if I can say it like that. We can have a debate. The United Nations, Parliament, there can be a debate. And a debate about a lot of stuff. And at the end of the time, at the end of the day, there's a certain declaration. And this will happen in the nation. Pew! And all the millions in this nation will align themselves in this way. This is the declaration that's given out. Pew! But you know, in our heads, in the past, not me anymore, in the future, in Jesus' name. I can have all this stuff, and I have all these arguments, and I have all these discussions with myself, in my head, in my heart, and with people. And I never, 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 never come to the place of giving a declaration to hell, to my flesh, to God, to my conscience, to who I am, to my future, to my finances. I declare in my finances, this is what will happen. I declare to the enemy that's always running over me, trying to run over me, this is what will happen. I will not fall in this rubbish again. I will not walk in this fear again in the name of Jesus Christ. But I need to declare, I need to make a declaration, I need to decide, this is what I give authority to in my life. My brother, my sister, you can still have the thoughts of rejection, still have the negative thoughts, you can still have the, the thoughts of... Uh, hate or bitterness or whatever, but you can decide that that thoughts will not come and have authority. I will not make that a declaration in my life. But what I declare is what I say. I stand by this. This is what I stand for, and this is what I stand by. That's it. But you know, the more you allow certain thoughts and certain thought patterns to come, like having that issue with that one, or that one, or that one. And even the issue with yourself. You allow it more and more and more. You will come to certain conclusions. It's, life is not worth in this way. And I can start to, to have issues with people and I give myself the right to do certain things. That's not right. It's not right. But that's then the declaration I will live by. But at the end of the day, you will live according to certain declarations. Certain voices, certain beliefs will have authority in you. You can have a weakness in your life, yes. You can still struggle with certain things. There can be certain voices still. Maybe a voice of depression. But you can make a decision. I will not clear, declare. That will not be my declaration. The voice of depression. I declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. I declare I will stand with Christ. I declare my God's perfect love drives out all fear. So my brother, my sister, like somebody will, will get the, the sign, the sign post, what do me I do? What they, what they go and stand in the street with. They stand for this, and that is what, what they will stand for. Don't go and stand with that demon of, of, of rejection and say, I'm standing for rejection. For why? Why, well, why must you stand? Well, well, if you focus on that, and everybody must just do right with you, because if somebody is not nice with you, you get an issue. 
If somebody didn't do this right according to your expectation, you withdraw your heart. That's okay, because next to you there's a demon with a sign. He stands for rejection. That's the declaration of his life. He stands for rejection. That's why he's so ever sensitive. And see, there you again and withdraw your heart or do this or talk about that one behind that one's back. Hey! And the devil come and stand here with a sign. He stands for rejection. He stands for his own hurt and second offense, second hand offense and whatever. And uh, he can lift up a banner. The enemy can lift up a banner. There's a declaration that this man make. And the enemy cannot make that declaration except if you allow him to. Are you with me? But you stand on God's word. Jesus Christ will make the declaration. He's standing in my name. I'm calling his name before you, Father, because he's calling my name before the people. He's standing with my name. He's not standing with other stuff. Stand in the name of Christ. Hello? Hello? Make sure that your declaration is in the name of Jesus. So that when you open your mouth, you are saying what God is saying. You know, in the ambassador, when I'm an ambassador in the United Nations from uh, Portugal, if it, he has the legal right to speak. They give him this half an hour that he can speak. This ambassador from Portugal. Then he stands up and he talks the most lot of rubbish. And the people can laugh at him and think, do you know even where is Portugal? You know? Do you know who's your president? You know? What the heck are you talking here? Now, sometimes we as ambassadors, ambassadors of a kingdom, you have legal right. You have the right where the United Nations, where the others, where the demons must be silent because you have the right to speak. Are you with me? To make a declaration of what you stand for and what you will do and how life will be in Christ. For your family, for you, for your future. Uh, hello? And then you stand up and all the devils look and think, what is he talking about? We don't even know. Because if you don't know your king, if you don't know the president of the, of the country, of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, if you don't know the principles, if you don't know the laws of your country, the kingdom of God, hello, you have the right to speak. You have authority to speak. Because you're an ambassador of Christ. And in the spirit, the demonic world must be silent. But if you just you talk a lot of rubbish because you don't know the word, you don't know the word, you cannot declare, you cannot declare from the kingdom of God what God in his kingdom is saying. If you cannot declare what the king is saying in his kingdom, then the devils can rise up and they can say what they say on behalf of you. This is what he's trying to say. <laughs> Who is making the declarations in your life? I hope it will be you, ambassador. Ambassador, and that you will not stand there. And as an ambassador, when ambassador is speaking, the rest thinks that that guy knows a lot. That guy will have wisdom. That guy will speak with authority. That guy will at least have a certain level of knowledge about his country. True? Oh? So when you speak, what is the level of authority, level of knowledge that you have from your king and his kingdom and his word, his principles, what he is saying? God wants to use you in such a way that you will declare certain things over Ukraine, over Russia, over your situation, over your school, over your university, wherever you are. It's not time just to sit back. Amen. Let's say, I have a prayer. I have provision. I have faith. I have a declaration. Number five, focus. There's a focus. 
A focus beyond your own life routine, where it's just all about you. You know when, when it's about you, the one that is enslaved, this is his focus. You're just going on. You're just going on. You're sitting. You could sit here. No, you're not doing it. But you could sit here, and you can just wara wara around in your thoughts, like this. And we are now sitting here, and I'm wara waring around in my thoughts, like some other baboon, and I uh, had doing my own thing, my thoughts are here, there, so that I learn here that while we receive word, when we look at the word and what God is saying to us, I can wara, 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 wara. I don't have to focus on him. I don't have to focus on him. When you look at your situation in the eye, when you can look into the word, focus into the word, then you can focus into your situation with the word. But if you cannot focus into the word, you cannot focus in the situation with truth and God's voice and what God is saying. Now you focus on your problem and you want God to help you, but you never focused into the word. You never focused on God in his presence, your time with him, time with the word. You never focused there, but you want him, he must just be there and he must just help you. But you are focused and you can be, then be focused on your issue, but you will focus on something it's not like you will not focus on something. If you're not focusing in on the word and focus on the truth and God's plan for your life, you will focus on the rubbish that the enemy will give you. But he will make sure that you will then focus on the rubbish. You will see. So the enemy is supposed to walk like this when you focus in with the truth. When you focus into the truth, then the enemy must bow his head because he cannot do anything. He must walk in the shame. That he's not going to win in this place. He was sent by Lucifer with an agenda of those demons to destroy your life. Demons, uh, demons that assigned to your life, that's, that's how it works. There's demons assigned to your life, but they, it's not going to work. Because there's angels assigned to you, but there's the word of God that is there for you. And the devils cannot be assigned to Christ. <laughs> they lost already. So when they come to you and they see Christ, they see the mandate. They see you're standing in truth and with truth. And even how Jesus won and he had the victory against the enemy with the word of God. And you stand with the word of God that you believe. You can stand, you can focus. In the situation, you will see him. You will see the truth. Are you with me? But you focus too much on your, on your feelings, you focus too much on your problems, you focus too much on all the stuff that you're supposed to make right and here. But when you focus on that, you choose to ignore Christ. So you choose to ignore Christ or you choose to focus on him. Are you with me? So I know, let's say I know I must... Focus on John Dean, even though I don't want to at this stage. But you know, I, I, I love to rather to focus in a conversation with Patrick. You know, it's, it's just something different. And so I'm here, but they are standing next to one another. And me focusing on Patrick the whole time. What am I doing by focusing on him? I'm ignoring him by focusing on him. So my brother, my sister, all I'm saying with you, to you with your focus is, you know, when somebody hears the word, that's when they want to be get sleepy. Then they are so tired. You, you ever experience it? I've experienced it in my life. Maybe not you. You can pray for me. But, you know, you can watch this movie, or you can watch this, and the energy can be there. But, um, oh, watch a movie for a second time, or listen to a teaching for a second time. Man, oh man. I mean, you've heard that before. Why now for a second time? It's like you want to freak out. You know? But truth, if I love truth, why? How the hell could you eat ice cream for a second time? In your life. You've eaten it already. You know already how it tastes. It's totally ridiculous. How can anybody expect of you to eat ice cream for a second time in your life? But with the word, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Beware you 
if you must hear something for a second time. Then it's boring. Shoo! <laughs> May God do a thing in here that there's a hunger for him. Like people say, I have a hunger for ice cream. You know? <laughs> I have a hunger for ice cream. But there's a very true, pure, passionate desire for ice cream. Hello. Now you say you have this hunger. Now I say, may God help you that you develop this pure, passionate craving. That's the wrong word. For the word. Hello? And for what? For God's presence. And when somebody speaks about the word, say, say to yourself, I like it. When you feel frustrated, you say, no, I like it. No, you are lying. No. What liar is speaking to me here in Futsak in Jesus' name? Are you with me? Why? It's because when you can have the breakthrough, the enemy can make you the most frustrated. Last, last week we said it about the guys there at the Jordan, eh? When they had to enter the land after 430 years. No, 400 and, no, 390 at that stage. After 390 years. <sighs> Standing there at the Jordan. But now the enemy must bring in as much frustration that he can into the situation. That they want to even fire Moses and kill Joshua and Caleb. Eh? And go back to Egypt. So when you see there's some tantrums rising up here. When you feel you want to manifest in certain things. And you are just totally blah with everything. Maybe it's the moment just before the biggest breakthrough in your life. The moment before the biggest breakthrough in your life. And the devil must try everything because he's getting stressed. Because the enemy could see Israel is there just at the Jordan. And what God promised for generations and hundreds of years before now. It can happen within one or two or three days. They can have the breakthrough for what was promised for hundreds of years before this time. It can happen within a day or two or three. What are we going to do? Let's cause a hell of a frustration. And that they will just look at the facts and realize how tired they are for because of all the hardships they had in their life already. And they will not see the promises of God. They will not see what God has done before. What he has done yesterday, the day before. No, they will look at all the bad stuff. And from that place, they will make a decision. Sometimes that is just a confirmation that you are on the brink of a major breakthrough. Of a major breakthrough. My brother, my sister, may you focus. May you focus in that what God has for you. Amen. Expect. Expect God's hand to move. Let's say there's an expectation in me. And with this focus and expectation, they go hand in hand. Now pray and provide it goes together. You, can, you cannot provide without a prayer. You cannot pray without also doing something practical in the name of Jesus. Pray and provide. The prayer and the provision in you, it goes together. Believe and declare. You can only declare what you believe. What you believe is what you declare. Hello. The two goes with one another. Focus and expectation. Focus and expect. What you focus on, that is what you expect. What you expect is what you focus on. I expect that they will... No, I have no expectation. Nothing is going to happen in any case. I have no expectation that God's going to do something for me when we come together in the 11 o'clock service. We are Kreari students or Kreari leaders, so we will have to be in the service, you know. I have expectation that nothing will happen. I must just be here, and um, afterwards I will make myself food. That's my expectation. I have no expectation. No, you have an expectation. You have an expectation that nothing will happen and that you are just here because you must. And that you will go out from this place with more performance in your heart and less of Christ. And it will be according to your expectation that is what will happen. You have the same expectation as the other person, but just in a different way. But my expectation, if this is my, it will be met. I have this expectation that nothing's going to happen. And then I walk out here and nothing happened. So that nothing with God and the word tomorrow will happen further. Nothing will keep on happening. 
with me, the word and God, and when somebody speak about. But you have still this expectation. You expect nothing will happen. According to expectation, it will happen. Are you with me? You have this expectation, well, you will just wara, wara, wara through the life for the rest of your life and then die and go, luckily, still to heaven. It will happen according to your powerful expectation that you will wara, wara on till you die. So you cannot say, I have no expectation. You always have an expectation. The one is just very destructive, negative, and one can be very positive with God. Now we can say, yeah, but how do I get that? Start with what you know, that where you are in 100% unity with heaven and earth, and the fact you're a child of the Father. And that is, you have an expectation that Jesus is coming back. Amen. Everyone here knowing Jesus Christ, you know that he's coming back. So from that expectation, from that expectation, start there with what you know, that you know, that you know this is truth. When I'm dying, when I die, I will see him. When he comes, he will definitely come again. But now, from that truth, go into the unknown that is shaky. And that is, okay, where is Christ then tomorrow? Where is Christ in my relationship, in my emotions, in my reasoning? Because I must have an expectation that he will be there in my reasoning. I must have expectation that he will be there where I study, there where I want to cheat, there where I want to... Do something in the dark. I must have an expectation in all those facets. But start with what you know that you know that you know. What you are sure about. Of what will definitely happen. He is definitely coming back. And then he says, encourage one another with your expectation. Tell your neighbor, I will encourage you with my expectation. I encourage you, David, to do absolutely nothing. Because I'm doing nothing, and I think nothing is going to happen. You know, yeah, Kriari, they're going to do, and they're going to this, and this, 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 this. Nothing is going to happen. And I bring you, I encourage you to have my type of expectation. I encourage you to do nothing, and to have an attitude and a negativity about everything. As I just share my heart with him. Where I'm negative. Or I will encourage him with my expectation according to the word. Encourage one another with the word Maranatha. The word Maranatha means Jesus is coming again. So you start with that from that place. I encourage you, David. Jesus is coming. He's not coming for you to take you to a different place. No, no, no. He's coming, and that must, that must excite you, that God is coming because he has a longing for you. He has an expectation also to see you. Hello? And from that place, so I encourage, then we encourage one another because Christ is going to do something for David. Christ, Jesus Christ is ready to do something with him. Jesus is ready to do something with him. And if I encourage him, it's according to the expectation that I believe David and Jesus is going to do something tomorrow together. And from that place, I relate to him. From that place, you relate to people around you. Supposed to. But if I cannot see that Jesus is doing something with me, or with me, how can you encourage somebody else? Yeah. When you go and encourage, then many times I've seen, then I feel, you know, I have this meeting now. And I don't want to have this meeting with that guy or with this person or with that person. Or And then I walked out much more encouraged than that guy that was sitting there in front of me. You know, and I say something and I say, I'm excited and that person says, okay, look at me. And I'm so excited. But praise the Lord. Um, I got the excitement, I got the encouragement in Christ, you know so sometimes when you don't feel you have the strength to do something many times God in his mercy will put somebody in front of you that you're supposed to encourage and when you do that, you are encouraged sometimes more than that guy are you with me? 
What is your expectation? What do you expect of people? No, you cannot trust people. You better. You better learn how to trust people because God trusts them. So you need to learn who you must trust. Oh, but, oh yeah, yeah. Remember, they can make mistakes, never you. And because they make mistakes, you cannot trust them, but they're supposed to trust you. Hello? You want people to trust you. Not true? Is it not, is it not how God created us? I mean, the one part of the body must trust the rest of the body. No, I only trust the head of the body. I only trust Jesus. So finger, come and live here on the head. It's just the finger and Jesus. That's all. It's just the head of the body, Jesus Christ, and the finger. It's only you and Jesus. I'm very sorry to say, but Jesus works through his body. All knitted together closely. So the more I'm healed, the more I become mature, the more I, my inside become healthy, the more I can trust different people. Are you with me? But if there's some things working in me, either demons or, or this thing of, uh, of, of rejection or this thing of a lot of hurt, you will cling only on to one person. You know, only this one person. You see the lady? No, no not, not one of the ladies here. But, and that lady is just on the guys. Or she's just with this one guy like a, like a brommer of a sticky flies. <laughs> okay, like, what's a, a brommer? What's a brommer? A fly is a flich. Flich is a fly. What's a brommer? A fruit fly. Okay, whatever. Something like that. But in any case. And this lady, she, she cannot help but just be with a guy. Because she cannot find herself with Jesus Christ. But it's demon uh, things, rubbish, working. But God wants to set that lady free. Free. Not three guys. Free. Free. Ah. Oh. May the Lord help us. Amen. I'll say. God help you with my cake. Oh, you have bread, bread, no. Because I see you don't go with me. Okay, you know, he's, he's clever. Take it wide shot, then he can just sit there, you know. Sis, God help. Okay. Focus, expect. What you, your expectation, you will focus there. I have an expectation to see my hero, the old example of the little boy with his hero. He has an expectation to see his hero. Why is his focus? He's focusing all beyond all the other stuff. All the other stuff. Doesn't matter the, what's in front of him. He does not see. In the crowd, he goes on and he will see, boom, his hero. The focus based on your expectation. But when you choose to focus, also it will become your expectation. Your focus, you choose a certain focus, it will become more and more your expectation. You focus on your issue, it will become the expectation. You focus on the rejection, you focus on the, on the mistake in Mardu. You know, Mardu has this mistake, it's typically like this. And I focus on that, that will become my expectation that he is going to do that again. And then I live according to my expectation, how I'm bound not to see the way God is seeing Margot, but the way I want to see him. Okay, let's say, I have a focus from God. I have an expectation from God. Let it be so in Jesus' name. All right, number seven. Guard your heart. You have an expectation that we will be finished for... I have a meeting still, so we can carry on quite a while, eh? That's it. It was put in alpha alleviates. Good. Number seven, guard your heart through grace and forgiveness. Guard your heart when you hear about any form of rubbish. Guard your heart. When people talk behind your back, when they talk a lot about rubbish and lies about you, what are you doing? I mean, this guarding of your heart is not... 1% of what, in a time like this, people must guard their hearts and believe that there's a God of love. When the sun is shot into 20 pieces, 
in a tank, the Russian boys sitting here in front of me. No, you are older. Many 18, 19 year old guys. They didn't want to be in that war. They didn't want to be in that war. And yes, yay! The Ukrainians are, are pushing them back, pushing them back, and 14,000 dead. How many of that 14,000 wanted to come and shoot all the aunties and womies and, and children? How many of them? Hello? So, how must that mummy, who's a Christian, and the son is a Christian, and they are serving God full out, but my son went there to go and slaughter a lot of people, and he was shot dead. And the prayers of the church there were answered, that the enemy was dealt with. My son. Now, now, now how you got your heart now? I'm not talking about the little pathetic issues that we can have tomorrow with one another. I'm talking about some real stuff like this. Are you with me? So may God help you, may God help me that we will get over ourselves so that we understand how to bring the gospel in a way where is it? God give us the grace to see your hand, your hand of love, your hand of love. And let these guys just Quit that rubbish agenda. Amen. And that thousands, thousands, thousands of young men, their lives can be saved. I'm talking about Russians. And then also in the process, the Ukrainians. And whatever the world is thinking today. All right, all right, all right. Let, let, let's finish off. God, your heart. If I want, um, if I find a small snake on the farm, Small snake on the farm. A little baby puff adder. Puff, puff adder. No, oh, mommy. Okay. And, uh, and I say, I say to, let me use somebody else. No, who, 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 no, no. John Ray. John Ray, can you protect the snake for me, please? With your whole life, protect the snake for me. And I will give you, I will give you a million rand if you can protect the snake for me. What am I saying? This snake is... For some freaky reason, very, 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 very precious and important and special to me. Is that so? If I say more than anything else, more than the false teeth or whatever you have, you, the snake, you protect the snake. I'm, what the heck is it with this pastor that the snake is so very important? The most important for God in your life, Nico, is your heart. And he says, more than anything else, protect your heart. Because your heart is so valuable, valuable to me as father. Yanni, your heart is so valuable. Are you with me? So guard your heart, because it can be very dangerous where your heart can go to. But because God, he wants your heart. Malachi 4.6 Hearts of the fathers to the children, children to the fathers. The heart of the father. He wants to give his heart to you. He wants to show his heart to you. But he wants your heart with him. He don't want anything from your lips if it's not from your heart. He doesn't want anything from your feet if it's not from the heart. He don't want all the, the offerings that soul can bring. All from the enemy. All the thousands of calf and, and things that he offered unto the Lord, not unto the devil. Unto the Lord, unto the Lord, you offered everything. But it wasn't what from the heart of God, because God said, this is what you need to do. And from his heart, he didn't obey God. Guard your heart more than anything else. Okay? You with me? That's number seven. Number eight, keep. Keep your commitment to God. Let it be pure and clean. You commit to God, doesn't matter what. Keep it pure and clean. I'm going to leave that there by miracle. That's number eight. Number nine. Number nine is what? Stay. Everybody say stay. You know, when the dog is very excited. Oh, man. He's so excited to come to you. And, you know, he's the tail. And the whole body goes in the tail. goes like this, you know. And, and you tell him stay. Oh, man. I even feel sorry for that dog, you know. There you go. But the dog must stay. Must stay. 
You know, and sometimes with genuine excitement, we want to do stuff even for the Lord. The dog is wanting to come to you because he loves you, you know. Not because he wants to destroy you. He's not wagging his tail because, ah, I want to eat and bite you, you know. No, other way around. First bite and then eat you. Okay. No, because he loves you. He loves your presence. He loves what? And you tell the dog, stay. Now, sometimes we could feel like that. I'm excited to do some stuff. And even some stuff for the Lord. And then God says, stay. Stay with what he has for you. You have this exciting opportunity or you are just, you just want to, you don't even know where you want to go, but you don't want to stay. Because inside here, there's a lot of turmoil. A lot of turmoil. But God wants to bring a calmness in you. A calmness in you. Allow God to do that. Stay and make sure you are in his will. Because where he is, that's your home. That's your home. Be at home with God. Be at home with God. Stay with God. Amen. Sometimes you need more faith to stay than faith to walk out. God's going to help you. He's going to help me. Amen. And when you stay, number 10, these two go together. Guard and keep goes together. Stay and establish. Number 10, establish. Let's say, I will establish where I stay. If I stay in my rejection, I will establish rejection. Where you stop and where you stay, that you will, when you stay in your bitterness, bitterness will be established in you. Your life will be the home for the demon of bitterness. When you stay in negativity or you stay in compromise, you will destroy yourself. You will be established in a life where the foundation is cracked, when your life must fall in. It must crash. Because you stay with compromise, your foundations must be and will be cracked. And whatever you build will crash. No. Why? It's not necessary. Let's stay with the word. Let's stay with one another. Let's stay even if there's weaknesses, man. Even sometimes we are weak. Sometimes we don't want to do anything. Are you with me? But just stay with God's grace. Stay with a loving God. Stay with a God that believes in you. That believes you are precious. Even if sometimes you don't even understand why he believes in you. Just stay with that. And truth will be established. When you stay in the word, the word will work for you. I stay in the word. I stay, I still believe. The word says this, the word says that. Ah, that's what the word says, but your emotions. So what the heck with my emotions? Just put it there. Emotions, that thing. Emotions not going to be established in my life, but the truth will be established. Even if sometimes if it's scary or it's shaky to believe the truth, or I, I feel my whole heart is not in that scripture, it's just stay with the word. Stay. I can stay with blessing. Even though he doesn't always love me. You know, sure, yeah. Or, I don't know. They always, they all loved me on a Friday morning until they married all the ladies that prayed with me in my house. Then nobody loves me anymore. They, I never see them. After they all got married, they never wanted to come and pray with me again. Can you believe it? But still, I love them. You know, I still, I will stay in the truth that for God so love blessing and curing that he gave his only begotten son so that net net they can be safe <laughs> okay <laughs> what are you <we> saying <laughs> why are you talking nonsense patrick okay what are we saying man yep yeah <laughs> i'm saying you stay with the word and you will establish truth. Stay with truth and it will be established. But what you stay, you stay with that issue with Christu and with Christi. Well, I said Christi in with Vilka. So Daniel. You stay with the issue, issues will be established. Issues will work and establish itself under, under you as a foundation. You stay with the word and the word will be established. You believe certain things, even though your faith is like this, sometimes in what you believe, 
you stay with the word, it will be established. Let's say, what I stay with will be established. God's going to help you and me. That was number 10. Number 11, going for the last one. Be sensitive. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We said last week, and if you were not here, please get the teaching. I put it uh, this later today already on the group. After Jesus spoke to the churches and said everything, who is he? What is great in them? What must, must they deal with? What is his promises for them? How can the future be? The last thing he says, if you have an ear, hear what the church, what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches in a global context. If you cannot hear what God is saying in the context of us, when we are together, you're going to miss it out, especially in the end time. You're going to miss it out. When everything is being shaken in your life, then you will not understand. Because there's a context of a we. When we came before the Lord, God, so many times he brought the people together with Moses. And then he spoke. When all the people gathered, then God spoke. So yes, they say you better be, you and God. Absolutely. But God is a family God. He died for a family, not just for you. There's no plan with just you and God. No plan, no dream that God has for you that's outside the context of family. So get into the place of God's heart and be, make sure you're involved with family. And from that place, from that place. Hello? Be sensitive for what the Holy Spirit wants to say. Be sensitive. But, you know, if I stay with certain rubbish, I become established in the rubbish. And I'm then sensitive for what the rubbish will tell me. I stay with my rejection and the hurt that I got out of relationships. I'm established in the rejections and with issues. And now I'm sensitive for anything that can look like rejection or somebody rejecting me or somebody not loving me or somebody not believing in me. I'm becoming sensitive to that voice. And not, the voice of God is not there. But even after you've done everything, be sensitive. Because you can be established in truth. But when everything is shaken around you, my brother, my sister, it's just knowing that Holy Spirit says, don't do that. Go left. Don't go. Be quiet. And just that still voice, it's just there. When you're established in truth, the voice is just there. Because truth is the presence of his voice. The, the, the working of his voice in me. Truth is his language. If I say, praat met taal. You speak, you know, you're speaking my language. You know? It's like, hey man, I hear your heart, you hear my heart. We're speaking one another's language here. Yeah. You with me? You with me? So it must be. Be established in truth. Stay with the word. Be established in truth. And you will just know this is God. This language what I hear. This, this, this talk that I hear. This is my talk. What is my talk? The truth. My talk. Here's my talk. The word. And when I talk the word, I can recognize his voice so much clearer. So much clearer. Let it be so in Jesus' name. And lastly, number 12. Number 12. Walk with God, work with God, work for God. Your walk, my brother, my sister, it's not just you have time with the Lord, you have time with the, with, with the, with the Word. And the walk is, it works to serve God. It's, it's not a fake thing. That work on the earth to deem. Who say it in English? That work on the earth to deem. It, it works, you know? This engine works. So this engine called Christianity, it works. It works. But if you cannot sort it out and then you have issues with the engine the whole time. Ah, was Dean? Dean is Dean. He had some mini. But I mini is funny begin from the beginning of Kriari. Uh, I hear it worked for a day or two here on the farm. But further, I've never seen Dean in the mini. Mini, mini is not mini, is a boom, boom. Okay. 
You with me? Hello. What am I saying? Is your Christian walk, is it working? Is the Christianity, is it working for you? Is it working? Having the word, having uh, the Bible, having come, coming to just, is it working for you? If it's not working, you're not walking with him. So your walk with God is when things start to work. When the Bible starts to work, it, uh, to have faith, to pray, it works for you. You're coming into that place. And I say, please, work then on, uh, go through these principles, these 10, 11 principles. Please, please, establish that in your life. Please. So that it will work. That Christianity, where that you can think of prayer, you just know it works. The word works. It works when I, when I can be with people and do it with the Lord, with people. Be open, be dependable, and to depend on others in the Lord. It works. So there's a walk with God that he desires of you. There's a walk with God that he desires of you. And then from that place, work with God and work for God. Like we said, you know, you have heard a lot of teaching saying, uh, from people saying, you must work with the Lord, not for the Lord. That's, that's not truth. That's not truth, because the word says, do whatever you do as if unto the Lord. That is, doing it for him. So forever and ever and ever in your life, in your walk with him, for eternity, there will be, you will be reminded about a work with God, a work for God. Why? For eternity, you will rule and reign with Christ as kings and priests. Kings with him, the king of kings. Priests with him, the high priest. As kings and priests, forever you will rule. But with Christ, you work with him. As a king, you work with the king of kings. With authority as a king, you come in your situation, you come at your workplace, and you come with the authority of Christ in the name of Jesus. You come into your workplace and you stand with authority. Because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You work with Christ from that place of authority. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. From that place, you get into the workplace. Hello? And then secondly, you work for God. Hell, I, if my boss is ugly, if your past is ugly, it can never be. Not maybe some other one. Be. <laughs> you do what you do as if unto the Lord as a priest a priest is worshipping worshipping I do what I do because I worship him I do what I do not as for men but as for the Lord you serve and you walk that road with that person and you forgive and you this and you that and you believe in that person and you will do what you do not because they gave you a thank you no, they're walking over me. They cannot walk over you. You can only allow the devil to walk over you. But people cannot walk over you because your battle is not against flesh and blood. You, they only can walk over you if you say what you had to do, you didn't do it for God. They don't thank me. They don't appreciate me. Who are they? God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit not appreciating you, not loving you. Okay, then I understand. But if the God of the universe appreciates what you are doing and he loves you and he's there for you and all the stuff, then who are you to say somebody's walking over you? It's not possible. It's not possible. But you can decide that circumstances and your flesh and the devil and whatever the enemy has for you that it can walk over you. Yes. Your battle is not against flesh and blood but against the evil forces in the air. Stand in the name of Jesus Christ and serve and love him. And because of your love for him, work for him as a worshiper in spirit and truth. As a worshiper in spirit and truth, work for him. But as a companion and as a co-worker with Christ, walk, work with him. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I will work with Christ. I will work for Christ. So I will walk with him. 
Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do. Ah, oh, please, Lord, come and do this in our lives. We trust you for that. Come and establish us in your truth. God, help us to get out of the place of, of entertaining other voices and other thoughts and, and attitudes and patterns and behaviors. And Ah, oh, Lord, help us through your grace in Jesus' name to get out of that rubbish. In Jesus' name. But we choose to stand with you, to stay with your word, Lord. Come and establish us in your truth so that what we will build with our lives will have eternal value. We trust you for that, Father, that our walk with you will be clear. Our walk with you will work. Because you've placed in us such a lot of gold, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. But help us to be faithful. Thank you for your faith in us, Lord. What an honor to come as kings and work with you. Yeah, Lord. To come as priests and work for you. Thank you for that honor, for that privilege. In Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name.